Now I kind of wish I did the entire thing last night instead of doing it in three separate parts. Because then I wouldn't be in such a rush to try and get this done tonight. And I could just chill. But, alas. I made my choices. I don't regret them. It's probably going to be pretty uninteresting for the first, uh, I want to say about eight minutes or so. Uh, because there's a lot of cutscenes that happens. So, basically at the end of Gate Generator, uh, something happens to Rudy, spoilers. And now the team is trying to find a way to heal him. So, they talked about how... They may be able to heal Rudy, but it requires them to uh, basically visit the Eel World, which is what the entire cutscenes here are related to. Now I kind of wish I brought my extra hard drive so I don't have to worry about the size of the uh, video file afterwards. But the three hour long video is only about 6 gig gigabytes. So I think my computer can handle it. And if not, it doesn't get recorded, well hopefully Twitch has the recording. One of the big reasons for me doing it tonight so that it doesn't get dropped. Because I spent pretty much this entire weekend trying to record. And every single time I've, I've done attempts, something has failed. Which is a big problem too, because I was pretty happy with uh, the time that I got this afternoon. Then I found out it wasn't loaded. Plus I had a whole bunch of improv strats, because I set myself up incorrectly for the last fights. I was pretty sure I was going to die and I had to redo it anyway, but then I figured, wait. I could try doing this. And then I just kind of BS my way through it. I still got an 804, which is really amazing. So once the plot is all completed, we get to the fun part, which is the forest prison. So inside the forest prison, um, it's basically supposed to be structured like a maze. But the way you get through it is the orange gems usually point to a certain direction that you're supposed to go. And if you follow the direction of where the orange gems are pointing you towards, uh, you won't get lost. So that's usually how I end up doing uh, that entire dungeon. Uh, the premise that makes it interesting is while you're inside Force Prison, you're supposed to escort Mariel, who's the eel girl that's with you, uh, to her brother. So she starts at level 1, and due to the fact that in this game you can possibly get into a type of ambush called the Danger Battle, where one person is singled out, it means that if you get into a Danger Battle and she's the one who's been kind of uh, selected, then uh, you'll eat like a game over, 100% guaranteed. But it doesn't make any sense to go all the way to try and prevent that, because it just wastes too much time to grab like a surprise guard, and you have Gaimon coins, which is the whole reason why you should probably pick up the ones at the very start in Rudy's prologue, because those are all the Gaimon coins you will ever need to finish the game. And if you need more than 10 continues to finish the game, then, well, the run's probably pretty crappy. I've kind of experimented with uh, just different movement patterns too this run. 
So I think in future runs I'm probably going to adopt using the slide dash for a pretty much like almost all the dungeons after Phantom. Because I think up to Phantom in the current route that I'm using, the ambush rate's typically pretty low, either due to level or some other mechanic that makes uh, the ambush rate's not high enough to consider using the slide dash. But everything after Phantom is basically like hell. There's lots of uh, bad ambush encounters, which wastes like a ton of time. Um, so using a slide dash is probably going to be more consistent, if not faster. Yeah, there we go. Then I said about eight minutes. So this slide dashing mechanism isn't foolproof, but uh, if you basically start and stop the slide within two frames, the encounter mechanic or the encounter gauge goes up a lot slower. Basically, if you can get it down perfectly within two frames every single time you do it, though, like you'll never proc an encounter. But because human reflexes. Doing this for like eight hours is probably not very realistic. Um, what this ends up doing is it will delay proccing the encounter, which in turn delays the possibility of an ambush for a particular dungeon. So even though it may not completely absolve you of all ambushes, it should be faster overall, tentatively. Because you're not running a full mom momentum when you do the slide dash, that's its biggest weakness. So the way I usually do it is I watch for uh, the character sprite, and when I see the legs start moving, I let go. If you have a green encounter going, like you should probably try to extend extend the distance of your dash to, because for those couple of seconds you won't get into an encounter. But that might require too much micromanagement, since you have to constantly be aware of like what type of encounter, or rather when you get into an encounter, and then just delay the dashing. But I might have to learn it eventually. I mean, I know it's probably really unrealistic to try and compare my times to uh, Nico, but I want like a sub eight in this game. But sub eight doesn't come easy. I guess for this current run, my real goal is just to have like an actual recorded segment. Because if, uh,. I uh, have an actual recorded segment I can use the video as uh, for submission processing so people can see kind of what the run looks like and where my skill level for it is at the game I guess fuck keep forgetting that ha that will happen that's the uh, other thing with uh, slide dashing um, if you run over an object or a panel or something that can be examined by the confirm button then when you travel through it with the slide dash, what will typically happen is you'll examine that object. So it can be kind of irritating, and it can slow you down at various points. Obviously the time loss isn't as big as if you get into an ambush, but... Also, where the hell am I going?
So at this point, I have to free the Life and Death Guardians. Um, the Life Guardian is basically inside this forest. You need to use the Freedom Key, which is provided to you by Vasm, who is Mario's brother. And then once you have that, you can reach an area that is previously not accessible to get uh, Life Flame. Life Flame is actually really, really good. Um, but it's a purely defensive uh, summon. What it does is it restores a amount of HP. I think it's tied to Cecilia's magic. And the main thing that makes it really good, aside from the fact that it heals HP, is that it cures all status, revives everybody, and on top of that it has priority. Which means that if you use it, even if Cecilia is normally slower than the enemy, she'll go first. So it's very, very powerful. Like, basically when something goes wrong and like, this late in the game and I have to improv strat and people are dead, like, Life Flame is like, the easy answer. Because it will prevent, like, problems from occurring. Or it will basically bring you back to a state that, uh, you don't have like, a team that's completely dead. Now that we're done that, this guy appears. So he will teleport us from one end of the dungeon to the next, so we never have to do this dungeon ever again. You know, which is very nice. So the Life Guardian is hidden inside the Force Maze, but the Death Guardian requires us to go back to Full Gaia, so we're gonna make that trip right now. And we're basically gonna go inside the book. So, unless you kind of play through this part, uh, the chain of sequence of events to do this is probably pretty strange. What you have to do is you have to go back to the Abbey, where Cecilia started in her prologue. You have to check out a book uh, to get instructions, or rather to get the information that there are pages of the book that's missing or something. And then you have to speak to the librarian who will tell you that, you know, the book's been borrowed, or those pages are missing, this is the last person who borrowed it. Can you uh, go and check on this person? And that's how you get the card, which opens up a strange door inside inside some basement. It's kind of weird. The nice thing about the uh, next dungeon, though, is that there's no encounters. Uh, it's basically purely a puzzle dungeon, so as long as you kind of know uh, how to get through it, it's usually pretty quick. So there's that ID card. Now we have to go back to the abandoned house. I imagine even if you've played through this part, it's probably still pretty strange. Because I remember when I was relearning the proper sequence of events uh, for this game. It confused the hell out of me. So I got the Giants of Ocarina uh, basically in a segment or portion of the time attack that I recorded that uh, wasn't broadcasted. But what that does is it will summon Asgard to any uh, normal flatland surfaces. I say normal because there are certain rugged terrain areas that uh, Asgard will not respond to. 
and unlike the teleport gem, which you can basically use like anywhere, the uh, Giant's Ocarina is the only way to summon Asgard. Silly, please. Okay, I lost time there that I probably shouldn't have. That was pretty bad movement. I believe if you used the Freedom Key or something in the uh, book inside the Abbey, you can teleport to the second part of this dungeon and that portion has encounters. But that's a completely optional thing that like you never have to do. Really? Alright, so I have to do that in this room because the only way to progress to it is to position the blocks exactly as it were when you came in through the room. That part always scares me. Because the uh, catawalks are very narrow. On top of that, if you screw up the order of the doors, it's very hard to get back on track. I think you have to completely reset the puzzle. The doors are basically supposed to correspond to answers based on the questions that then ask you. But I pretty much found it very arbitrary, because I remember when I was like trying to relearn it, to try to explain to myself why it has to be that certain order, I remember like never really understanding why the answer is what it is to a particular question. So I pretty much eventually just figured, okay, I'm just going to memorize what door I have to go into. So yeah, uh, basically during the last segment, uh, the game also allows you to purchase uh, these items called teleport gems. I don't think I actually talked about this. But uh, teleport gems basically allow you to go back to any town or location that you've been to. So they're very, very useful because I've ranted beforehand about how I really hate sea travel in this game. And it's sea travel is really slow to boot on top of the fact that there's no way to really... Uh, stop any ambushes or delay any amb ambushes that may be incoming, so teleport gems are super useful. I don't know why the game does that. I think if you go through a screen too quickly, Sometimes it does some weird things, but I don't think you can really break through the game.
At least nobody's mentioned that you can, like, skip direct portions. Alright, so we're gonna use the uh, teleport staff on the gorilla on this entrance too. So it actually appeared on both sides. Which is very nice, because we never have to do this dungeon again, basically. Apparently the interesting thing I found out uh, when I was playing through this is that you can also get into an ambush from boss encounters. I don't really understand uh, or know exactly why, but I have a theory about why that happens. I think certain encounters in this game are flagged as random, and certain encounters are flagged as boss encounters. And basically, if you're unlucky enough to roll into a encounter that they labeled as a random encounter, but it's actually like a boss encounter, that you will not be able to cast escape, and you have to fight through it. Like when the time I did it, I saw like I think it's three spar toys. Which are like the enemies you fight at the very beginning of the game, when Edelheim is under siege. I think in all the times that I've done attempts or practiced this game, or played through it casually, I have only seen that happen once. But it is extremely unpleasant. Alright, so the upcoming battle is pretty simple, I just need to grab FP advantage on Cecilia. Uh, so she can take off blocker, because that's really not going to help. So Cecilia fights this fight alone. She by, she's by herself, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward fight. So Elizabeth will change elemental weaknesses at the end of every turn. And the strategy is just to basically hit her with a summon whenever possible. But the interesting uh, fact, which you probably didn't know, and I certainly didn't know until I was doing research, is that she's also vulnerable to gravity. 20% only, but that makes Graviton actually worth casting. I don't like to uh, blow too many carrots on this part. So, when I'm very close to 50, I just cast Grav and see if I can get a shot in. Because if Grav actually hits, like, it'll save a lot more time than casting a summon. Uh, shoot. I don't know which weakness it is, so I'm not gonna try fooling around with it. Alright, water. I don't know why she counterattacked either, because Cecilia's counterattack rate is normally pretty low. If you do this fight correctly, you basically never have to heal. Because regeneration will keep Cecilia healthy for the entire duration of the fight. So you feed Cecilia Force Carrots to your summons. And four summons is all it takes to kill Elizabeth. Yeah, whatever. Come at me, bro. Water. Again. So if that grab hit, she'll have already been dead. I'm gonna feed myself another force carrot. Yeah, whatever. Oh, 
wind. An interesting aspect about this fight is that while her elemental weaknesses constantly changes, uh, she's only weak to the primary four elements. So she'll never be weak to dark, lightning, ice, or uh, light. Which makes it kind of predictable for what you have to do. Spent a bit more of the carrots than I wanted to, but I should still be okay. Because I just need to make sure I have a carrot for Demon Prophet. And I have a carrot for Zacubus, so it should be fine. Like, in theory, if you can get Grav to land first try on a 20% chance, which probably isn't even that, because it may be modified by magic, I think. Just because the other boss is weak to gravity has like a 50% chance, but in practice it feels more like it's 33%. So if you can get Grav to hit like first try, like you save so much time on that fight. But like first try Grav is probably like a segmented or yeah, like a segmented thing only. Because I can't imagine a time attack or a real time attack really being able to use grab that reliably, but it's more so the fact that you want to save carrots, and if you hit the grab for 20%, it saves so much time. I lost a bit of time there due to the counter. Uh, counter attacks in this game are weird, because even though you can inertia cancel all of it, most of the time you actually don't want to, because unlike a Wild Arms 3, you can't perform like the power cancel, which is cancelling the attack without using FP. So if you need to perform or use FP on your actual turn, and you perform the inertia cancel, then you'll actually be unable to perform the action, which is really, really dumb. But it means that, like, most of the time you actually want to rather watch the counter-attack animation, unless you have enough FP to guarantee that you can still perform what you need to do on your actual turn. Sucked at the wrong one, so I'm gonna waste time there too. Cause yeah, I had like a really good uh like run through of this in the afternoon, but then like half of it didn't get recorded, so rip me. There, Cecilia. God damn it. Really? I need to replace my audio splitters, because they're kind of dying. As you can probably tell. So now that we have Rudy back, we can use the radar again. And the radar will allow us to open or see certain chests hidden in this area that we normally couldn't see. And this is very important, because there is an item that I have to pick up here. For something that's coming up. Oh well, but in the video being out. Cause sound I can live with if I don't get proper audio. 
I just want the video so I have documentation of the fact that this can actually be done. No, about half an hour in it looks like. Alright, so now that Rudy's back, Emma reveals to us what she's been working all along, which is actually an airship inside like I guess the underground of Edelhide. But the uh, ship at this point is still incomplete. So what that means is when you actually get use of the airship, you cannot fly above mountains. So even though it sounds like, ooh, you have flight and it'll be useful, it really isn't. Uh, because you can't fly over mountains, which limits the spaces that you can go to. And the next dungeon that we go to has a super annoying boss to boot. Uh, what it is for that fight is there's going to be eight enemies. All eight enemies don't really do a whole lot of damage, but they waste a lot of time and they have about 2800 health each. So in the uh, portion that I recorded that was not streamed live, I picked up a uh, skill for Jack called Blade Pulse. And that skill is basically used for that fight only. It's a single single thing that we're single technique that we're gonna use once throughout the entire run. But it saves like three minutes because like that fight is amazing if you try to do it with single target. And we're going to do the same thing once we get the proto wing. We're gonna pick up something for Cecilia basically solely for that one fight. Because it'll save so much time. Which is kind of weird. You would think that something like that, for one fight, it won't be worth getting. But, if you try doing that fight normally, it's such a mess. Oh yeah, the hitbox on this thing is, like, super huge too. So it's very easy to hit the side of the mountain. And I get stuck there, because... Cool story. Alright, so now that we have that, we can teleport to Court Syme. And then we're gonna use the airship to fly over, like, a single portion of the ocean. And then land. Alright, so time for more slide dashing. And you'll see why I like to slide dash if we get ambushed. Which we probably will. Alright, so you have to grab the grenade, and even though it looks like you can skip this tutorial, you can't. You have to watch that before you can do it for real. And all you really do is you throw the grenade, and they just run to the end. Oops. Wrong room. Alright, so, in order to proceed, you have to make an offering. The first one drains all your MP, and the subsequent one drains half your HP every single time you perform one. Um, this is what the Ambrosia's for. Otherwise, you'll have to go through the rest of this dungeon or backtrack out, 
with no MP. So if you get ambushed, uh, well, good luck. So pff, that's pretty much like the reason to pick up one of those ambrosias. And then we'll get to the reason for the second one soon enough. You also don't uh, give Jack the ambrosia. You just need to ambrosia Cecilia. Because you can still get ambushed during this short little walk, and as long as Cecilia has MP, you can escape. Alright, and here's what we're gonna do menuing. And. Uh, let's see, take off, FP advance, regeneration still on. Okay, she's fine. So he gets defense up 1, defense up 2, uh, blocker, HP 1, HP 2. So that's FP up, and then he gets FP advance with his flight floor. All right, it's HP, MP, defense, uh, defend, resist, ice break, and then we're gonna feed two level up on Jack. So that restores everybody's health and HP and MP. That is pretty much the only reason why you have to grab. The level apple. Um, it may be worth using the level apple at a later point in time to avoid backtracking, but because there's so much uncertainty for the Arctica fight on whether or not you're gonna have enough MP, I don't feel comfortable in blowing the second Ambrosia here because you can't use the level apple in an actual fight. You can only use it on the field. And I know while you don't have to dash up to the orbs of the pillars, I find it easier to do that because the grenade's trajectory is kind of weird. Alright, here we go. This strategy is very specific. As you can see, if you try to fight these things one on one, you have to watch these guys take turns all the time, which is a really big hassle. I thought about actually trying to get a setup where you can get Cecilia to go first and then cast Ice Crystal and, and bounce Ice Spells back to them, but in order to do that, Cecilia has to be at like an extremely high level for the speedrun. Like, it's not possible by any stretch of imagination. So, that pretty much could put it the idea. And then I found out that, well, what you're about to see actually kind of works. And I'll explain it more in depth once that fight actually ends, because I don't want to jinx myself and basically go, that has never happened before. Alright, we're set. Alright, so that is part of the reason why you can't do the Cecilia go first and then cast Reflect to bounce all ice spells. Because each of them has a chance of casting the spell. So your chances of getting that without one of them casting the spell is pretty low. It's also the reason why in the very first turn I had to set up so that Rudy goes first. Because sometimes Cecilia will go before a couple of them. And if those last two decide to cast a spell then it ruins the whole point of the strategy because Jack's not going to be anywhere near as strong because he needs quick to boost up the damage on Blade Pulse. Alright, and in case it's your first time seeing it, they only apparently counted once. 
which is probably the reason what makes the strategy work. And even though this might not kill, um, I make Jack do it anyway. Because there's a chance it'll kill a couple of them, and that's like, that many times the animation of their turns you don't have to see. It's possible for him to kill all of them if he gets really high damage variance rolls, but he typically won't. So you'll watch a few of them go, but it won't be anywhere as many. Also gave Rudy and Jack lucky cards in this fight, because at this point, uh, Rudy's levels is pretty much all that matters, but Jack has a duel that's coming up in Antarctica. So if he doesn't have enough levels, um, his accuracy will suffer, and it makes that Antarctica fight really long and really, really, really annoying. Like, it's a huge time waster. So you want to still give Jack his experience, even though at this point he's kind of not very useful. So you do all that to recover the Gemini circuit. Which is what Emma needs for the Proto Wing or to fly at higher altitudes. Apparently there's two and we've been assigned to get one. And Jane and Magdalene have been assigned to get the other. So we're gonna head back to Edelhide. To report our progress. So I don't remember if this part was in the original story, but basically you find out that while Jane and McDowell have recovered the other half of the Gemini circuit, uh, the boat which they're traveling on, which is piloted by or captained by Bartholomew, gets attacked by one of the golems in the ocean. So even though they're safe, uh, the captain's apparently MIA at the moment, because he went down with his ship. This is another one of those times where the game's not very clear, where you have to go in order to progress through your story. Like, it refers back to a hint that you should have gotten, like, three or four hours earlier. In terms of speed run pace, but if you were doing this normally, it's probably about, like, 20 hours, maybe. So since Bartholomew's, Bartholomew's ship got destroyed, um, early on in the game, it talks about how Ship Graveyard is the place where all broken ships eventually flounder to. So that's the sole hint that you have to remember in order to figure out where you're traveling to. Otherwise the game just kind of goes, well, you don't have your Gemini circuit at this point, and it doesn't really give you directions on where you have to go. So we're going to open menu, use teleport orb on ship graveyard. Now we're going to actually head to ship graveyard. And we're going to, I guess, recover the captain from the ocean. So now you have both Gemini circuits, and Emma can power up the Proto Wing into the Gull Wing, which is the airship. I 
and this time your airship can fly over mountains. Huzzah! Fly over mountains. Alright, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of item hunting at this point. So you need to have 13 migrant levels before you tackle the last dungeon. Um, because at 13 migrant levels, each of the battles you cancel at the very last dungeon costs only a point. If you only have 12, then it will cost 2 points, which is way too many. Because um, there will be way too many encounters. So, in order to do that, or find the 13 migrant levels, you have a few options. Uh, I'm gonna get like another, I believe, migrant level when I fight Tarask, and that's gonna bring me up to 11, so I basically have to get two more. And basically without doing, like, super bosses and extra dungeon stuff, you can pick up the migrant seals either through uh, searching for items on the field, or doing, like, puzzle boxes. And I basically timed it such that what I'm doing right now, which is basically we're going to find an item or my good seal in this corner over here. It's going to be faster than doing the puzzle box. The puzzle box takes about like 3 minutes to do. This is 90 seconds. And then I'm going to head to... Uh, we're going to head to... Ooh, look at that. The air should disappeared gonna head to Gunner's Heaven, which I opened up much, much earlier, but I didn't actually go through it, because it's part of the uh, routing change that I made. Um, basically, if you do this when it's first available, you'll be traveling by boat, and I've already ranted about boat travels, but in particular, if you do it at the earliest possible time, it's really bad, because the enemies are really, really strong at the time where you can initially get it. So, aside from the fact that the boat being slower, and the enemies being stronger and everything. You don't actually need the Migrant Seal since you want to be traveling through uh, slide dashing through Demon's Lab anyway. So the net result is that if you get it later, it should save time because the Gold Wing is just much faster than traveling by boat and you don't have to worry about ambushes. Now that we have everything, I'm going to head to Court Slime. And then once I land the plane the next time, I will have to set up Rudy properly. So that should just be south of where I am. Yep. Okay, so position the plane such that uh, you don't do that. But it's basically by the very edge because you need enough room to summon Asgard. I once landed it like perfectly dead center. I couldn't summon Asgard without getting back into the pro into the goal wing. Uh, beat It is actually possible to do this battle with the, uh, what's it called? With FP Advance still on Jack, but it basically requires you to have, like, an additional carrot. And I don't have that carrot because I blew it on uh, the Elizabeth fight with Cecilia. Okay, so I'm gonna make some changes to this as well. Um, I'm gonna cast Fragile and I'm gonna make them defend. I need Fragile to hit, otherwise it's gonna take much longer. And it has a 90% chance of hitting. Then I'm gonna manual turn so that Cecilia, Rudy, Jack, uh, come in replay. Gather raid, potion berry. So, the one thing about Tarask is he has a 100% counter rate to any physical attacks you actually use on him. And those counters do a lot of damage, like about, I want to say 550 on average to Rudy. And as you'll see, he only has 1100 HP. And the fact that, you know, you can get poisoned in fight, so it's very easy to get killed. Which is why you reorganize your turn order so that Jack goes after Rudy. So you can heal him with a Potion Berry from basically a guaranteed counterattack, which you can tell will always happen. 
and you pick lock on active for basically this reason. You can combo it with uh, command replay to do two Gatling raids in one round. All right, he should be dead, or very close to it. Yeah, of course, of course you don't have enough MP, or rather, you don't have enough FP. Whoa, whoa, really? I didn't even manual turn around. That's really weird. Oh well. <laughs> Rip. He went before Jack. That's like, I've never seen that happen before. Okay, so the next portion is going to get really fun too. Um, <clears throat> This next dungeon I think replaces Tri-Pillar. I'm not actually 100% sure because I never got this far into original Mild Arms. But basically, a uh, plot event happens. Alhazad gasses everybody. So everybody falls asleep. And then they all get separated. So in order to progress to the next dungeon, we have to use each character by themselves uh, before they group back together. The fact that your party is all split up becomes... Uh, it's kind of a hassle, actually. Like, it's neat on paper, but obviously when you're speedrunning it, it's suddenly makes it very unfun. Um, the big problem in this grand scheme of things is that Jack is usually too weak to handle random monsters, even if he's leveled up properly. So, Rudy and Cecilia usually don't have much issue. Uh, but Jack, on the other hand, is one of those where it's like, you may consider actually swapping FP advance off of him. Because then it'll let him use Accelerator, uh, Fast Draws, which will uh, secure more kills than normal. Because Rudy's usually already strong enough where even if he doesn't use Lock-On, he's going to get a kill anyway. I probably lost a couple seconds there. And that was weird. I didn't slide far enough. Alright, so you get to use hand pan while you're traveling through the sewers. So the jail cells are locked by the power of Zeke's weapon or something, I think. So because hand pan's the only one who can travel around freely, he's gonna do some investigating on his own. Or attempt to anyway. Alright. Was a little bit slower than all like. I hesitated for a second. So if you travel through the rest of these pipes, you can speak to your other party members, who will give you hints about what uh, you actually need to do. But all you actually really need to do, you don't need to talk to anybody. You just have to go to where the terminal is and then put in the proper password, because apparently that's what the cells are controlled by. And because Siegfried's bad at using password rules. We break out for free. So Glum's Amber is the name of Siegfried's weapon. Which is what they mean by it's uh, the cells are sealed by his weapon. And here's where it gets very fun. Because if you get ambushed, you're gonna be alone. Which isn't too much of a problem for Cecilia. And to a lesser extent, Rudy. But you really do not want to be ambushed as Jack. Oh shit. Speak of the devil. 
Oh god, this guy. He's probably the worst dude to run into, because he has so much health. Oh, he can also heal. So I'm not too worried about MP, even though I'm using a lot of it right now. Because Jack only needs like 4 MP for a boss fight for it to work. Holy shit, how much health does everything have? And this is the problem when you don't have escape. Everything takes forever because you actually have to fight it. Oh yeah, this is also only the beginning of the dungeon, and I can still get ambushed along the way. Fun times. Alright, so to minimize the amount of time I have to swap characters, the order that I'm always going to take is Jack, uh, Rudy, then Cecilia, then back to Jack, and then Rudy, then back to Jack, and then Rudy finishes. Of course, he has to be ambushed by the worst thing possible. Wait, what? I guess I clipped off the very edge there. And since Cecilia has escaped, I'm going to be a bit more liberal with my movement. So I'd rather be ambushed here than in the final dungeon. Because the final dungeon has a bunch of really nasty encounters. But yeah, that's usually what I mean by ambush luck. Because where you get ambushed and what you get ambushed by makes a big difference. Alright, Cecilia is done, so we're back to Jack. Now he has to get through the rest of this. Of course. Of course, all my ambushes have to be with Jack. Because why not? I swear to god, Jack, if you run out of MP, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Like, how bad can you be? Alright, I'm at 18. This is promising.
The other thing I've noticed about this game, um, just from playing through it, is that ambushes actually tend to happen in twos. Uh, meaning, once you get ambushed once, you usually get ambushed a second time very quickly shortly afterwards. I don't know if that's just a coincidence, or if there's something with the random counter variable that makes it such that getting ambushed a second time immediately after the first time you get ambushed is a lot more common. Good job. Alright, so, laying a bad contrast, by the way. It's not very clear where the actual path is sometimes, so I will walk and still fall. Okay, so we go back to Jack. Throw a wire hook. Amazing. Well, if I have to use the Ambrosia now, I'll do it, but fucking A. This is a really, really bad pandemonium. Or whatever this dungeon's called. Because my ambush luck has been absolutely garbage. I guess this makes up for the fact that I didn't get ambushed at all in uh, Gemini's core. Four ambushes! That is amazingly bad. We're not done the dungeon yet. Like, fucking seriously. And this is why we never have to worry with Rudy. Because he's gonna one shot everything. He can run all of bullets, that's the risk, so you still don't want to provoke more encounters. And I guess Cecilia can run all of MP2, so pfft, it's not to worry about. But, I mean, in general, they're going to get through the fights much faster than Jack, because Jack is basically garbage at this point. Five ambushes and counting. Sup? Alright, I'm gonna use no lock on snipe bullet. This should still keep one to KO, so that will save the lock on animation. This is a really, really, really bad dungeon. Like, five ambushes is like a record. Because we're not even done. There's still a top floor of this stupid dungeon to go through. Alright, everybody joins. And then... Uh, give Rudy... Some elemental resistance. Silly elemental resistance. Alright, I'm good. Oops, I probably shouldn't have done that. Whatever.
Ah, oh, no kill. Alright, alright, Gia, you're done dicking around. Two low variant Gatling raids, five ambushes in the same dungeon. I see. I should probably also explain about Demon Prophet. So, Demon Prophet is normally a very difficult fight because what happens is he has two little hooks uh, that he holds, and each of the hooks can block one of your character's attacks when you act, uh, but supposedly they don't have any effect if your entire party takes action, or so the game says. So, from practice and experience, what I found is that your first turn is always a free turn, Meaning that the uh, hooks are not active, so he won't block any attack on the fir first turn. But every subsequent turn, um, his gimmick will work exactly as described. So there's a chance that he will block your attack uh, every turn after the first. So what you have to do on basically turn 2 and onward is you have to get everybody to basically attack him. And what I found is that that will prevent him from blocking any character's attacks. And you basically have just enough durability to survive two of his turns. So if that fight basically went on for any longer, like, you'll be dead. But, thankfully it doesn't. You have just enough HP and everything. And that's why you need the uh, full carrot there. Because otherwise you'll have to go and recraft everything, I think, in order to, for that fight to work. Normally you don't have to watch a second Gatling Raid animation, but what I found is that uh, if you roll a, a really low variance Gatling Raid, so Gatling Raid can do 6900 to 5000 points of damage, and I got 5,200 both times, so that was a really low Gatling Raid. But if you get like a 6,000, which is like an average Gatling Raid, then a combination of Jack and Cecilia will basically be enough to kill it. And you don't have to watch Rudy's animation, which will save like 10-15 seconds or however long it takes Gatling Raid to animate itself. And we're finally up back to Artica, so we get to do the Artica slot fight of Doom. And I'll explain more about that too as the fight actually begins, but for now, I have to remember how to set myself up. Because I've done this fight more than once, where I'm not properly set up. Probably should have done my menu there, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Remove HP up 3, Icebreak Regeneration. Remove FP Advance, HP up 2. Uh, get rid of Resist up 1, Resist up 3. Then set up HP 2, HP 3. Generation. Take these off. And take that off too. What's his luck at, actually? Good. Oh god, he's at good. Oh wow. Holy crap, I'm actually gonna have a good fight for once.
I guess that makes up four to five ambushes in Panamona. Alright, so I'll explain a bit about this fight. Um, this fight is the last, basically, Harkin fight you do. And it's completely patternized. So what happens is, she repeat the same pattern every few turns. The first turn, so turns one, four, seven. She would always do uh, Reflex, which if you hit her, she'll counterattack. Uh, if she's activated the counterattack stance. Then turn 2 is a physical, and turn 3 is uh, Hark and Tempest. Both do about the same amounts of damage. And she'll repeat this pattern uh, ad infinitum. So, what you want to do for this fight, it's pretty brainless. Uh, but you need to have all the items ready. So you want to always be using Speed Fang with Accelerator. Which is why you plant those carrots uh, way back like three hours ago in Secret Garden. So you have a couple of extra carrots to burn here. And then the only thing you do is you eat a carrot, you do Speed Fang with Accelerator, keep doing that until you run off FP. If you do it correctly, you should basically never have to heal. And for once, I'm actually at best luck. Which means I will actually be able to hit her. So normally, if your luck is at bad or even normal, you'll miss quite often. This is like the main reason why you pick up that tiny flower at the very beginning of the game in Rudy's prologue. It's for this fight. This one fight is why you do it. You also pick up the second Ambrosia for also this one fight, because if you run out of MP in this fight, um, instead of like 4 minutes, it's gonna take like 10. Cause running out of MP in this fight is the worst possible thing that can happen to you. Cause outside of the fact that you have to deal with Harkins of Aid, you also have to deal with the fact that she has a uh, physical, uh, uh, physical blocker, which stops physical attacks 60% of the time. Which is super fun of course. Because you get to deal with the fact that your attacks can miss and hit blocker. And then on top of all that, when you do hit her, you only do about 150 points of damage. You're better off using ice gems at that point. Which is pathetic as all hell. Oh, even at best luck you can miss. See? That's what happens. Missing is the worst thing in this fight. I'm also not gonna counter, even though I could've. Cause I want to save my FP. Uh, that's really cutting it. But she should be dead. There we go.
Oh god, really? There's no video? Shit. <sighs> I guess I'll finish the run and I'll check if it recorded. Obviously, it's not gonna record because... Hey, that seems to be a thing with this game. That it doesn't want me to record. Says the audio codec is incorrect, so I don't understand why it's not recording. Ah, uh, of course, of course it's gonna have issues. Well, fuck, I'm already really into it, into it now. I only have the final dungeon left, so I'll finish it. But that's like the worst thing I could possibly hear is basically that it's not working. That doesn't make sense, because it was working like a couple of days ago. I don't understand why it's not working now. No wonder there's no video. As long as there's video, it's fine, but it sounds like there's no video, which I don't understand. This game doesn't want me to say that I'm finally done with it. It wants me to keep running it for eternity. Because everything that can possibly go bad is going wrong. Oh well, if I die somewhere in the final dungeon, I'll call it a mercy kill. Ah, shit. look into that, I guess, when I'm done streaming. I don't understand why. Alright, I get the extra cartridges for Gatling Raid, because the last dungeon has lots of bosses, so I'm likely going to run out at some point. And since I've already picked up the Migrant Seal and I've gone to Suka Garden for the extra carrots, I'm basically done everything. I just need to do menus now. Uh, that goes off him. So he needs HP 2 and FP Advance. And then she needs Regeneration HP up 3. He can take uh, Defend. I plan on finishing it, yeah. And if I have like a time for it, I'll update it. If I don't, I'll get to do it again. And again, and again, because what the fuck. 
I unfortunately can't actually actively take a look at it, because there's not a long enough cutscene where I don't do anything. I have to constantly mash. I just hope that the local recording worked, because then I can upload it on YouTube, because I really don't want to do this again, because I've done it like three times. Uh, what do I do? Uh, Toy Hammer. Got Ray, come here, replay. So, I guess I'll just keep with the commentary. Whatever. So, at this point, uh, nobody's levels really matter. Oh, God. <laughs> if I was even just slightly more, more injured, that would have been very, very bad. Alright, we're in. But yeah, I really want it on record. Like, just footage of the gameplay. So, if I don't finish, I'll have to do it again. And that really just makes me really upset. Like, I would break my disc, but I'm pretty sure I would not be able to find it. I don't have to pay a ton of money for it, so... I'll just rage quit. And play, like, Grade 2 for, like, the next like five weeks to do math. Alright, my original train of thought. So at this point, um basically the only people's levels whose matter is Rudy and Cecilia. Cecilia because you still want her to level up to gain the speed so she can be faster and cast escape. Rudy, because he's the only person that has really any, like, real damage at this point. So, you can pretty much sacrifice Jack for whatever, like, it doesn't really matter. A lot of the fights in this dungeon are very dangerous or very annoying in the amount of time that they waste. This dungeon's also divided into three parts. This is just part one. The entire like final dungeon takes like 50 minutes. Like it's really long. So of course there's gonna be more slide dashing. The only really annoying thing about it is that when I have to turn the camera, I have to maneuver my character at the same time. Well, it's not gonna work. Okay, so these puzzles are also really annoying because there doesn't seem to be any real rhyme or reason or pattern to them, so you just either have to memorize it or you have notes that tell you exactly what you have to do. I think if I actually understood those puzzles, they would be a lot easier, but I don't. So I can't even really memorize them. So these blocks uh, basically form a path in like a room, like a one of the rooms, a couple of rooms down. So you set that up properly so 
You don't have to run back and do it. There's a chest on the left, I think, contains potion berries. So if you're running low on healing items, uh, that's where you go to replenish. But this run, I haven't really had to use really like a lot of healing items, so I still have like a ton of them. Oh yeah, I did do this. And that's actually one of the nicer encounters too. Cause Cecilia goes first. Or goes before them. You can imagine what happens if like the enemies where Cecilia doesn't go in first and you have to take more time watching all the enemies act. It's not very pleasant. Alright, so one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Fucking hell, Jack. Not helping.
That was close. In there. Thank you. I'm on the right puzzle. Shit. Yeah, I am. Okay. Fuck you, Jack. Alright, she's dead.
let's see. Alright, so next part is where I can gain a lot of time or lose a lot of time. Depends on what I'm ambushed with. So that's the end of the first part of the final dungeon. Now on to the second part. And getting ambushed in this part, in particular, is extremely, extremely bad. Like, the worst thing that can possibly happen, as far as this last dungeon goes. I say that, so I'm probably gonna get ambushed somewhere.
Alright, I'm not gonna fill up. Because there's a recovery point up ahead. So that solves the second part, and now on to the third. Yes, this dungeon just keeps going and going. So I'll probably have to come back to this recovery point in a while later too. But for now, now we get to the third part, which is doing these uh, puzzle rooms. So this first one is all about Rudy and the Mighty Gloves. Uh, most of these are not too bad, actually. I remember when I first did this, played through this game, when I was first learning to, to run it. Uh, this was a really difficult portion for me to understand. But for whatever reason, it seems to be a lot easier now. Oops, those are always bigger than they look. Excuse the lack of commentary. Just trying to concentrate. For the most part, this is very straightforward. Uh, Good job, me. Okay, so inside each of these uh, Kaiser rooms, there's a gem that you have to pick up. Which is done after you collect everything or solve the puzzle inside the room. And yeah, you can still get uh, ambushed in the foyer for whatever reason. Guess the game really likes its encounters because there's also a whole bunch of different encounters in uh, each of these rooms to boot. Alright, so here's a pretty neat uh, skip. Uh, credit to Scoops for finding this out. I don't understand exactly what's going on, but uh, I know how the trick works, so that's fine with me. So basically the extent of the trick is that apparently the teleporter doesn't despawn. So even though you haven't done the puzzles in these subsequent rooms, you could just run to the exit. Which probably saves like a couple of minutes. And this is the trickiest one. And of course I get into an ambush here, because why not? Wow, that's terrible. Wow. Oh god, am I gonna wipe? <sighs> Holy shit. 
shit. Of course, this has to happen in the last room. Also, what the fuck? Amazing. I don't wanna know how much time I lost on that. And the amazing thing is, that's not even like the worst ambush encounter you can get into. Like, that was bad, but it was not the worst one you can get into. Which should say everything you need to know about this final dungeon. AKA, it is shit. It's long as hell, and there's so many things that can go wrong. <sighs> Guitar. Alright, what's up? So, unlike the regular Tarask, Fragile, I believe, has a 100% chance of working on these guys. And if they don't, well, rip my ass. Okay. Ideally, you want to get a level up sometime during this gauntlet. Uh, you have to fight several of these guys. And there's a bunch of teleporters in the room. So the way you're supposed to get to the exit is basically go in the reverse order of what the rainbow colors are supposed to be. So, the next one I'm stepping on is going to be green. So head back to green. The next one's gonna be yellow.
And once we get to here, we can just go straight to the red teleporter. For whatever reason, uh, even though you didn't fight the enemy there, it doesn't despawn. <sighs> of course. Oh, good. they're gonna be faster than Cecilia, because what isn't faster than her slow ass? God damn it. I think I lost like eight minutes alone in this final dungeon from ambushes. Simply amazing. Why the fuck did they put encounters in the foyer of these rooms? Really? Ah, uh, it's gonna be the worst type too. Amazing. Who's back? It's this guy who we haven't seen in like four and a half hours. Do nothing, turn one. Carrot, shining star, retaliate. <laughs> Alright. You do that. Self, or uh, no, Toy Hammer Cecilia. Uh, fragile. I really don't care about Jack at this point, so go ahead. Oh, Berserk Break. How nice. I actually don't know if the damage bounces back to him. If he does, he's just took 3,000 damage. Whatever. 
too. And yep, he's dead, so... Retaliate reflects damage from Berserk Break back onto him. That's kind of funny. Rip. Alright, re-leveling up there is important, because this means that I don't have to backtrack uh, to heal myself and restore all my cartridges. Because that level up will have fully restored all his ammo. Alright, so note to self, I have to reorganize everything before jumping into the final door. Uh, FP advance, regeneration, uh, so assault guard, I guess. I don't care about that. And then at this point, I don't really need to equip the breakers, but uh, I believe negative rainbow is dependent on, like, it's eight randomized hits, and every hit is an elemental. So, having lots of elemental breaks reduces the damage to my understanding. Okay, um... Gatling Raid. Yep. Cilia Rejunk. Because this one's not going to be fragile, so... I guess it makes more sense in practice to fragile him, but I believe Rudy come on round. It also avoids negative rainbow, which is the thing I'm really worried about. Because I don't know if negative rainbow works the way I described it. It has a very huge damage range. That's really what I'm scared of. If Rudy doesn't run around, I have enough Gatling Rays to do it again. Yeah, he's not dead. It's fine. Uh, lucky card him just to make sure he levels up. Really? Really? Yeah, when you don't break the funds, the attack's nowhere near as good. Alright, he's dead. So we're almost done. Now we get to fight Mother, who, surprise, is back from the grave. Alright, so, lock on Arc Nova. Full care at him. Um, fragile.
so what I did was I used Arc Nova turn 1. Because when I use Arc Nova in that fashion, it stops Mother Fried's uh, supporters from acting to second round, and they're like the real big problems because they do like a, like a ton of damage and have a bunch of status flying around. So you want them dead pretty much ASAP. And Arc Nova basically will hit all targets, which is the main reason why you use it. Um, so you pick up the cartridge basically just to handle that one fight. Because otherwise, if you don't have Arc Nova, that fight is very, very nasty. There's way too much status that's flying around. Um, and there's always... One of the big problems in that fight is, like, Cecilia can still get uh, hit with Misery. And when that, that, when that happens, it's no fun. So ideally, it never happens, obviously, but can't be choosers. So roll the punches. All right. So this fight is very different from the original. You win this fight by doing, I believe it's 8,000 damage before turn 5. As long as you do that, you can dick around the rest of the fight. But uh, it's actually surprisingly difficult. Because... Zitsu Fai has a lot of damage. <laughs> like, probably more than any other boss in the game. Uh, you need a carrot. It's probably because they realized that this 5 turn defense thing wouldn't be any challenge if you weren't constantly pressed on defensive. So, as you'll see, the damages are all very, very high 2 hit KOs. Which makes this fight very dangerous. Also, auto counters. Uh, make sure you select Life Flame. If you don't select Life Flame, uh, GG. You take way too much damage, and there's no way to come back from it. But Life Flame makes this makes this fight really easy. Because priority, like close to full healing, is really, really good. Surprise. Alright, once Rudy lands this Gatling Raid, we're done. Okay, so there's your 8 grand. 51 times 2, so I, I dealt 10,000 damage or so. So the rest of this is just a show, really. Alright, turn three. Turn four. Final turn. And I'm just gonna skip the ending because it's like 22 minutes long and I don't even know if I PB'd. Although even if I did PB, like, it would not be an amazing time, but as long as it's recorded, I don't have to do this shit again. I really don't want to do this shit again. Alright, so blah blah blah. Final time is... 803.57. Ugh!
ah, like 20 seconds slower, but consider the fact that I think in my PB I had like first try uh, Rat Monkey, and this is, was like a fourth or fifth try Rat Monkey. Like this is still this is still okay. It's not bad. I'm gonna check to see if it's recorded. Um, and I'm gonna sign off because uh, I don't really want to do anything else. I need to make sure this is recorded. And if it is, then I'll probably be uploading on YouTube just because Twitch didn't work. So hopefully the recording venue still worked. If not, I get to do this shit again, so you get to see it again tomorrow for another two hours. Uh. Okay, so I'm off. Later.